So I want to talk about the new Trophy Wife story and how it relates to the hypergamy sector online. So there is a woman named Isis. She has a platform called The New Trophy Wife, and she gives hypergamy and level up advice to women. And she recently did a video on her channel exposing her husband for SAing her two daughters. And she also exposed via text on the screen that he essayed her as well during the first four months of their marriage. And I'm gonna tell you, when I watched this video, it made me sick to my stomach. So if you are sensitive to the topic of SA, especially when it comes to children, I am giving you a trigger warning right now if you have not watched the video. Um, and I have to say that I think it was incredibly brave of Isis to come forward and tell the truth about what's been going on in her marriage. Most women in that situation, they would have just stayed silent, stopped posting videos, would have disappeared from social media. And I know some women think that she should have done that and they think that she should have stayed quiet. But when you build a brand off of being a quote unquote trophy wife and you position yourself as a guru and you're online teaching women how to get the kind of marriage you have and the kind of husband and lifestyle you have, it becomes your responsibility to tell the truth if that marriage fails. And unfortunately, this is what you sign up for when you put yourself out there like that and you build an entire brand off of your relationship, which is why I personally don't recommend that any woman do that. But I do think that Isis owes this to her audience, especially considering that she was giving guidance to other women on how to live her lifestyle while her husband was literally SAing her behind closed doors. That is serious. And I'm not saying that she was obligated to tell her audience everything that was going on um, in her personal life or in her marriage. But if she was still giving advice while all of that was happening in the background, that's kind of like false advertisement. And it's situations like these that put a stain on the whole hypergamy sector, even if the women are actually giving good advice. And in her video, Isis mentioned that she didn't know what direction to take her platform. And Isis, if you're listening, this is the direction. This is some free marketing game for you. Now that you have everyone's attention, you can now talk about all the red flags that you admittedly ignored in the beginning of your marriage so the women that you have following you can know what to look for. It's kind of a pivot, but it's still on brand because your experience is a potential part of hypergamy and really any relationship. Because what happened to her could happen with a man who doesn't have money as well, and it does all the time. So what she could do is use her own story as a cautionary tale because she went against her better judgment and she admitted to doing so in the video. And by the way, if you consider me using stories like this to highlight the red flags that women should avoid in dating, if you consider that as quote unquote victim blaming, then you might want to click out of this video. And I want to make it clear that what happened to Isis and her daughters is not her fault because women cannot control the behavior of men. But could she have avoided the situation? Absolutely. And I'm not going to lie about that just to sound like I'm not victim blaming. Y'all continue to give me all of this pushback about vetting and how men supposedly can't be vetted. But this woman said right in the video that she ignored a lot of the red flags in the beginning and she proceeded to have three kids for this man after he R-worded her four times. Now, could she have predicted that he was a PEDO? No. And I apologize, but you guys know I have to censor myself. Could she have predicted that? No. But she knew he was abusive before having those kids. So that means that he was possible to vet and leave before having his children. He showed her that he was not worthy of children. And imagine if she would have left after the first R-word incident instead of now. She would have never had the chance to find out that he was a PEDO. That is how you successfully vet a man, ladies. You leave after the red flags. You don't stay. And you definitely don't have children after you see all the red flags. And like I always say, women are allowed to make mistakes. But what I don't like is women acting like they were blindsided by men when they show you who they are the entire time. And if not the entire time, early on in the relationship. And it's one thing if you were just completely manipulated and a man just completely switched up on you, but that is usually not what happens. That is not what happened in this case. And that is usually not what happens with most women. And I know the popular thing to say right now is, oh, just don't date men. Just don't date them at all. 
And I'm not against that if that's what you truly want to do. Listen, I completely understand. But we will never live in a world where all women stop dating men. That is not realistic. I don't care how many times y'all get up on here and tell women how horrible men are. I don't care how many times the men get on here and tell other men how horrible women are. We still gonna date each other. That is just the way it is. We still gonna date, mate, hook up, have children. We still gonna do all that. And it is okay for women to still want to date men and marry men and have families. It's also okay if women don't want to do that. And I know you guys are getting a ton of different advice online, but the answer is not for heterosexual women who want to be partnered to date other women or be single if that is not what they want to do. The answer is to either vet men that you're interested in dating or if you don't want to take the risk with men, be single, build community with other women. And yes, you can also decenter men whether you are partnered or not. But vetting men is possible if you still want to date them. And by the way, you can get my series on how to vet men on my website. The link is in the description box. But yeah, ladies, this is just another case of ruthless hypergamy where women choose money over their own safety. And I do think that all of us encouraging women to be hypergamous, we have the responsibility to consistently advise women to put their safety first and also to factor in a man's character when vetting them. And be sure to watch my video on what high earning men to avoid if you haven't already. I have always said that money is not all that matters when it comes to men. And that does need to be explicitly stated so that women don't find themselves in these kind of situations. And of course you should have your own money as well. But according to Isis, she came in with her own money. This woman was not broke. She said she was making 90K a year. So money was not her problem. What stood out to me was the desperation because she said in a different video that she was living with another man and she jumped into this current marriage with her husband because she wanted to leave the other man and she needed a place for her and her children to stay because apparently she had two kids prior to having kids with her husband. And she said something about moving in with him after a month or a few weeks or something like that. So that tells me that she acted hastily out of desperation and desperate women and especially desperate single mothers, are targets for abusive men. And that's exactly why I say, ladies, stop making romantic choices from a place of desperation. These are all the things that Isis can teach on her platform going forward. And so now I want to talk about how this ties into the hypergamy sector online. So there have been older videos that have resurfaced of Isis crediting both Shira Seven better known as the Sprinkle Sprinkle Lady, and also Kevin Samuels for the lifestyle that she had with her husband. So her crediting them has sparked this discussion online about the effectiveness of Shiva Seven's advice and also the effectiveness of the entire hypergamy sector online. And some people are even blaming Shira for what happened. And if not directly blaming her, they're blaming her for misguiding ISIS or influencing her to get with an abusive man. Now, personally, I don't think that this can be blamed on Shira. The only people responsible for what men do is men. And I think it's important that we put the blame where it belongs and not blame women when men do something wrong. Now, what I will say is that I don't particularly like the direction the hypergamy movement has gone in. I said in a live stream not too long ago that the hypergamy sector It's pretty much seen as a joke now because the information has been reduced down to these bite-sized TikTok clips that hardly ever have any nuance and it leaves too much room for error, even when the advice is good. And if you've been here for a while, you know that this happens with every movement that blows up online. The message will start out small and as it grows, it starts getting watered down or extreme. I talked about this a long time ago when it came to the femininity movement. When I saw the extreme direction the femininity sector was headed in, I addressed my concerns and I ultimately decided to take down my femininity content and put it on my website. And I did that because I didn't want to be associated with the femininity and hypergamy extremists and the platforms that didn't provide enough nuance in their advice. And also because I was repeatedly getting accused of saying things that I never said and things that were easily disproven because the videos were right there. And it's because I was being drowned out by all the watered down extreme femininity rhetoric. 
And I think a lot of people intentionally exaggerated what I was saying as well. But this happens with every movement. And this is also one of the reasons I disassociated with the BWE sector as well. Ladies, we cannot afford not to have nuance in these discussions. One, because women are way too vulnerable as a demographic. And two, people are counting on us to fail. And they are waiting to blame us for something. Because I've noticed that ever since women, and especially Black women, have started being taught how to level up and benefit in the dating market or any area of life, really, because of that, people have become hyper fixated when women fail at leveling up. Whenever a story comes out where a woman fails at doing whatever is being taught online, it's immediately blamed on people teaching the advice. And in this case, there's proof that this ISIS woman took Shiva's advice. But in most cases, the stories are completely unrelated to the content creator. This happens to me all the time. Whenever a dark-skinned woman says or does something stupid, somehow it's Chrissy's fault, even though what she said or did has nothing to do with me. And it's nothing I would ever teach dark-skinned women to do or say. But because I teach dark-skinned women how to level up and navigate around colorism, They try to connect me with these random stories to discredit me and stop people from listening. This also happens with the the failed interracial dating stories involving Black women. Anytime a Black woman who's with a white man gets a divorce or she gets unalived by him, it's swirling gone wrong and suddenly it's my fault and any other Black woman who encourages Black women to swirl online. And I've actually seen other level up hypergamy gurus do this as well. And they do it for a different reason because they are in competition with other hypergamy and level up content creators or because they're pro-black and they just prefer seeing black women with black men. And by the way, I wonder if they're going to highlight this story with ISIS as quote unquote black love gone wrong. You know, since ISIS has a black husband, I highly doubt it. But anyway, yeah, we get blamed for everything. So I do recognize that because nobody wants women and especially black women learning how to get ahead, people discredit those of us showing black women how to do that. So they will use these unrelated stories to discredit us. And this is why I always say to the women giving level up advice online, if you're going to do it, be very careful of how you deliver your message and how you're allowing your message to be used. People are going to discredit you anyway, but you should still try to be as thorough and nuanced as possible for the sake of your audience. But just know that if you decide to do this, you're going to get blamed for other people's mistakes that you have nothing to do with. And this is why I personally don't recommend showing your face while giving level up advice, especially because it makes you a huge target. Now, she doesn't seem to care, but if you care about your reputation and you don't want to be known for what she is known for, I don't recommend doing what she does. If you have a lot to lose, I don't recommend doing what she does. And also, if you're an unambiguous Black woman, you're not going to get as much grace as she does either. That's another thing. I see a lot of Black women jumping to defend she and saying how people cherry pick her message and misconstrue what she says. So she has a lot of support, but I don't think she would if she were an unambiguous dark-skinned Black woman. Same thing with ISIS. I don't think she'd be getting as much empathy from Black women if she were an unambiguous Black woman. Because I noticed that when something bad happens to a Black woman, especially if she dates non-Black men, no empathy is required. It doesn't matter if something bad happens to her or her children. Y'all see how they did Lauren Smith Fields. She did not get a lot of sympathy from Black men or Black women. But if it's a mixed woman with a Black man, Black women have way more sympathy. And if Black women dare to criticize women like Isis or she they're accused of hating, they're accused of victim blaming or hating women or not having enough empathy, which I'm sure I'll be accused of after I upload this video. But this is why I personally would never want to be the face of the hypergamy sector. And I'm actually glad that a Black unambiguous woman isn't the face of it because we would be held to a higher standard by everyone, including other Black women. And I'm not saying that she doesn't get critiques. I do see Black women critiquing her a lot. But on the flip side, I also see tons of Black women coming to her defense. And it does seem like her Black woman following, they are not allowing her to be blamed for this ISIS situation, which she shouldn't. But going forward, I expect y'all to give the same courtesy to unambiguous Black women. The next time some random swirler gets unalived by a white man, I don't want to hear anybody reaching trying to blame me or any other Black woman YouTuber. Leave us out of it. If she can't be blamed for ISIS, and her decisions, then we can't be blamed for random Black women who fail at leveling up or fail at swirling. 
So that is all I have to say about this. Let me know what you think about this story in the comments. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch up with you in the next video.